What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom, man, Eric Sheets Haber. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I The Masters just wrecked me. It was like uh, two bad losing golf weeks in a row, and I feel like uh, what happened? I felt invincible there for a minute, but uh, I didn't play much baseball this weekend because my own stuff, Sheets, sounds like you're getting pretty into it, coming close a lot, and uh, yeah. talk about that, and then we'll get into tonight's slate. I'm psyched, man. I, I'm really into the baseball. I'm into not having guys scratched. I'm into not necessarily having to stay in front of the computer all night. I mean, it's probably a good idea just to make sure you guys aren't scra scratched, but it's not the same level of, of NBA stress. Um, and dude, I obviously had a great NBA season. I, I don't know no right to whine, but it's yeah. just, it's just an annoying sport to play. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Especially and, uh, the mas and the masters were bad for me as well. I uh, didn't play the best golfer in the world. <laughs> That's what happens. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had a little bit of uh, Sun JM kept me kept me mildly mildly interested for a while, and then then yeah. uh, and then that was the end of that. So uh, onward and upward, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm fully entrenched with the baseball. Oh, I did, I, I wanted it. Uh, that's the beauty. That's the beautiful part part of what what I do. I play in all these sports. I won like two LOL competitions. Which oh, is beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. absolutely. It made up for like maybe like one tenth of the Masters losses, which is nice. So. <laughs> So there you go. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to do a, we're going to record the main slate and then we're going to go live with the early slate. And, and we are going to, I'm not going to say we're going to figure this out because it's nothing to figure right. out because all slates are different, but right. we'll get you through the season. How about that? I mean, yeah. We'll yeah sure we the thing is that that's what we're going to do it, but we're going we'll, uh, you know, I'll come up with a more regular schedule for the, for the main slate stuff, but it'll be similar to our NBA thing, you know? Um, but I, I do think, and it'll be a lot easier for me to stay through the things because it's not like I need to go dig up some extra information or anything. You know what I mean? But I do. Um, so we'll be we'll be ready for that. But also for the early slates, I'm going to try to get live things out as much as I possibly can for all the yeah. that happened during the weekend. And it's just you know, there's going to be some days where maybe it doesn't work out perfectly, or maybe a two game slate I wouldn't go as get excited about as much. Um, if there's no real tournaments i don't know but we're going to try to make sure to do it them we're you know every day as uh, as of right now and then we're going to get ready to do some on the weekend so anyway we'll get into all that stuff let's talk about the uh the actual slate uh sheets why don't we pull up your first first, first of all just as a uh as a as a note it's a 6 40 p.m uh Second lock thing to remember yeah yeah um and and you get some of that i mean you get all kinds of funny stuff uh so just be on the lookout. And, and and I don't know if it's tonight, but you sometimes get FanDuel slates that don't have the same games as the the the, the DraftKings slate. So just uh just be on the yep. lookout. I'm I'm focused. Well, folks, I, I have I have both my DraftKings and FanDuel sheets out. Mm -hmm. Um and we'll we'll just see how it goes. But but overall, the overall kind of uh theme, if you you know, I would imagine for this whole season so far is how I don't want to say cautious, but the combination of cautiousness with caution with the top tier pitchers and just bad performance of the of the top tier pitchers is kind of dominating the uh, the DFS newsreels right now. Do you agree with that? It's only been four days. Like okay. I don't think pitching should ever be looked at like that. But I but this is nothing surprising. It's going to be this way for over a month. They're, okay. they're, they're, they always it's, this has been the exact same thing that's happened the last four or five years since this whole thing started. But it's maybe a little bit longer even. Okay. But nobody's it gets extended except for like a couple guys, a rare few guys that you can have somewhat of a ceiling on. Right. So it just comes into matter if you're paying up for pitching. Of course, you're still paying for a more sure result. You do need to play pitchers, but you can't be expecting quality starts from uh, all but maybe like ten guys these days. Um, I would also like to say that I feel I'm disappointed. Byron Buxton only had two home runs yesterday. Only two. I know what the hell is going on with him. He's slow I mean, he's, well, you know what? He had to regress. So, I mean, that's, a, it's... Uh, that's right. Um, all right. Well, let's get into it. The first game, uh, Tampa Bay, Oakland. Um, Sheets, I like Patino. I think that he's a good option. It's a perfect example of a guy who's not going to probably go terribly deep. Tampa will have that happen a lot. Um, but 7.8 seems reasonable and I like him. It's a, it's a good, you know, a great matchup against this A's team, which might be the worst offense in baseball. So, I like him and I like, I like uh, trying to get, you know, taking a couple of these guys off of, uh, off of Blackburn um, for Tampa Bay, uh, especially Adamas, a Rosarena um, and Franco. But uh, I, I like, I like both sides of Tampa stack and Patino quite a bit. You saw my pitching, my pitching sheet here, and this is going to you know available for like preview subscribers. I mean, I have like 11 pitchers I could play. <laughs> on the slate. Yeah. Um, 
and there any and, real reason to do anything like that? Like, I don't know. Do you know? No, what I mean? I'm not going to play 11 pitchers. Right, 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 right. I'm, I'm just, just saying that yeah. that they're all close for me. That's my point. They're all close, that, they're all like within like a couple of fantasy points. Of yeah, yeah, and and so I I could do some ownership business here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Patino is not a guy you're going to be able to do some ownership business with. I mean, he's going to be very popular, I believe. Um, yeah. And you do have that risk of, well, there's risk always, but I mean, Tampa is definitely known to, um, you know, I don't want to say do funny stuff. It's not funny stuff. I mean, it's just, just freaking brilliant stuff. Whatever Tampa does, I'm just presuming is the right thing to do. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's probably a good, uh, good, good policy to, to assume that. Um, but Patino does rate to be, for me at least, one of the top two pitchers on this. Well, at least one of the top three pitchers on the slate. Um, and he's certainly in play. Um, Tampa, I've been meaning to ask you about that. Well, I brought up before the season started. I'm in Tampa, I always have in the back of my head this idea that you have to be very careful about, about rostering guys in your stacks or whatever that might not, you know, might not play. I mean, not, not play, might not play all the innings. So that's the one thing I was going to ask you about. I'm not really getting the Tampa too much as a good stack today. Um, so uh, if they're popular, uh, I'd probably get rid of them. But 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 I don't even have them being that popular. I have other other teams popping up as much more popular than they are. Um, so I, I'm not really getting to too much Tampa. So for me, I mean, right off the bat, it looks like Tampa, the pitching, and Oakland. I'm certainly not getting to. Yeah, I. I... I think that I, I think Tampa is probably going to look like one of the two best stacks on the slate. And I think oh, yeah. it actually is for very good reason. I mean, you want to pick on these kind of teams like the A's who basically have given up everything. They, this, this is not the same team that's been contending. This is probably the worst team in baseball or one of the worst, I'm sorry, one of the worst, <laughs> the worst lineups in maybe that I've ever seen in baseball. Like there's guys, they've only got like three or four guys that would even play for other teams. Um, they'd all be platoon at best. And they, they were, they were nine hitters for other teams. So they're, they're just got awful. I'm going to try and pick on both from a pitching perspective and a hitting perspective as, as many times you get those bad, bad teams in there, the more you get that sort of weird wonky game, but yeah, the Tampa thing about worrying about the, the substitutions is okay with some of the guys at the bottom of the order, but it doesn't mean the other team's always going to bring in a lefty to go pitch to your long relief that you could, I mean, they've got, they've got a, they've got three switch hitters in their starting lineup. They've got righties, they've got lefties. Uh, there's no necessarily reason they would do it, especially. And, and again, I don't think these teams, teams are still trying to figure out who their bullpens are. So it's hard for me to speculate on what kind of guys we have coming in out of the bullpen right now, because uh, they're still trying to figure out their roles. So I'm not going to worry about it on for right now on this kind of a little slate on a big slate where you get popular guys who are going to be playing, getting to at bats and you know, that's going to happen. That's something we're going to have to figure out later in the year. I would say, I would say before I move on that, um, before we forget, um, uh, one of the top, well, I mean, it's just baseball, but one of the top projected whatever uh, values on the slate is in this game, and that's uh, not Brandon Lau, not Nate Lau, but Josh Lau. Right? Um, so him at 2,800 uh, in the outfield, I don't know where he's going to bat or whatever, but um, he's rating to be a pretty decent play as, as uh just above and beyond stacks and things like that. Yeah, yeah, fine. He's fine. You can see where he's hitting. Uh, Taylor Wells, Taylor Walls, excuse me. Um, yeah, he might be a better one because you don't have to use up an outfield spot. But right. Um, all right, let's uh, let's talk about uh, this Mets and Philly game. Uh, Sheets, to start me off here. What are you looking at from this game? Because I I feel like a lot of people are going to want to stack Philly. Um, where are you standing with this? And they're gonna lie. Yeah, so this is this is the this is the like advanced analytics type 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 uh, type situation. Like uh, like last year, people were I guess sharply or depending how you look at it, they were they were they were not of the belief that Taiwan Walker's first half of the season was was real. They thought that the the, the advanced analytics that he was gonna he was gonna regress and. And some sometimes it just kind of looks like it worked out that way. You know what I mean? Like second second half of the se- second half of the season, he kind of uh, kind of collapsed a little bit. Um, but he, he he was injured a little bit, so maybe it wasn't advanced analytics. People can't flex completely. Um, they really tried ran him into the ground. I think anyway. Um, I don't. He, he's like one. Of, uh, they're like a thirteen pitcher, eleven pitcher. I like him. He's not one of them. Um, one of the Suarez is an interesting one. I think, I think he might be a candidate for the opposite. I don't know. Like he, he really put, put stuff together in the second half of the season, I think. 
um, as I recall. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess he's going to be looked at as a decent option, but I tell you the Mets, uh, Mets mean business this year. You know, they, they have a, they got a lineup and, and it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of scary to attack that lineup, you know? So I don't know if Suarez is going to be a priority for me, but he's certainly, you know, certainly an option. Um, and as you said, I think both sides of this game, I think more in attention. I think the Mets and the Phillies both are, I think both look, look, look decent. Um, I have the Phillies rated right now, like tied for third, fourth as my favorite. And when I say my favorite, I always consider both upside and value and everything else. Um, um, so I do like Philly. I'm not quite getting to the Mets right now all that much, um, but it's kind of hard to deny their lineup. Right. So that's kind of where I'm at. Just kind of, uh, you know, no Walker for me. Suarez in play, and uh, probably the Phillies is the, my, the preferred of those two hitting environments. Yeah, I'm definitely open to Suarez. Um, I'm a little, little, little worried about it, but um, I, I, I don't know where he's going to end up for me. I think I like Patino a little bit better at a cheaper price and an easier matchup, but I, I do, I, I'm okay with it. I think this Philly is going to be owned lower. And I think you're going to have to take some of the early ownership projections of the grain of salt as we look this oh, year. Yeah. Cause they're all these guys who, cause they're, they're doing a lot of these point projections. You could see where the ownership projections are coming from on a point per dollar basis. Right. But the truth is you don't need to save money, hardly any. And it's so easy to find guys who you can, that it'll flock to one of those guys instead of it being all of these guys looking like great plays who no one's going to play because they're expensive. I don't think that's going to happen. I just think, I think Bryce Harper is a great play on both sides. I think that Rio Muto, Schwarber, uh, Castellanos might be a little bit more of a reach for me at this price. Um, if I was going to just rather spend on the other guys, the other Phillies. Um, but maybe it's possible that they end up a little bit lower owned. So I, I would be open. I, I don't think, again, sort of like when you don't know about how a team's bullpen is going to be hit, uh, yeah you kind of have to sort of bet on what the teams are betting on. If the team's going to really try to compete for a title, like the Mets are trying to do this year, and they sort of are going all in, um, you got to assume that they're going to, they're going to try to be a little careful or it's going to be harder to, to beat up on their pitcher. Not that you can't just a little bit harder than it will be some other teams, which is why I like to attack the Oakland's or the Detroit's of the world in general. Um, but I think the Phillies definitely look like an interesting stack and I'm going to let ownership dictate a little bit more for me um, closer to lock. I'll revisit this one, but Right now, if they're if they're gonna if they're gonna be low owned, I'll, I'll jump on them. I, I had the impression early on the way things would shake out, the way people love playing against Walker. One thing about Tywin Walker, he does give up power, so people love to love to attack him. Um, but if they're if they're not gonna play him, I'll take some shots there. I just I'm not I'm not like super high on them. They're not my favorite stack of the night. The other thing I would mention uh, if, if we talk about Fanduel is th this whole and we talked about it a little bit in the. Um, in the uh, in the in the season preview thing, yeah, the deal with this catcher first base spot, okay, it, it, it can it can really screw with some people's heads, you know. Yeah, normally, like you want to, I say you want to, but normally, yeah, I mean, you, normally the first basements are usually going to be better than the catchers, but there are some catchers that are better than all the first basemen. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like, like, like you take a guy like Rio Muto. Or what's his name? Who's the best hitter in baseball? Per, Salvador Perez. I mean, like there are some catchers out there that are just as good as, if not better, than all these other first basemen. So don't be, don't be embarrassed to put the the better catchers in the in that first in that catcher first base spot. Um, yeah. I mean, people do it in, in in DraftKings, you know, because it's you know they have to play a catcher. But I don't know that many people will still do it on uh, on fan. No, they won't. I mean, like the other night we had the five game opening day slate, the, the one split slate with Toronto and t Toronto was the most popular stack and the catchers were two and 4%. Um, really? Everybody else was like 24 to 25 to, to 55%. It was pretty nuts actually. So it's a great way to get different. I totally agree with that. Um, although it's not usually as different with Real Muto. I'll just point that out because in general, people do play him a lot on FanDuel, like, like a lot of, like probably too much actually. Last year he was like one, cause he was always cheap as he's like, He's got the name, but he doesn't actually put up like the same stats that you necessarily think he does. He's good. Oh, really? But, well, I mean, you know, you got a guy hitting 270, hitting 25 home runs, and we're, you know, we're supposed to play him like a Guerrero who's hitting three, 330 with, with 45 home runs. You know what I mean? It's just that kind of a thing. But anyway, I um, I do think in general, like, yeah, that's a good way to get different. Uh, on to the, to the Toronto-New York game, and this is, this is like an interesting 
thing. Like, I think Manoa would be the guy we would play later in the year. He's the one who's got the upside. I actually think that there's an outside chance they would let him go a little bit longer. The problem is the Yankees tend to be patient and take take more pitches. Even if they strike out a lot, they, they take a lot of pitches. So it's not like he's going to have that 70 inning, 70 pitches and he'll get through six innings or something against this team very likely. But I, I don't know. Both these pitchers deserve to be acknowledged and both teams for one-offs as hitters for me. I don't really want to attack these teams. So that's sort of where I'm at. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, um, I, 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 it's pretty, I think this is the case that Manoa, I think made, maybe made his debut like in Yankee stadium last year and threw like a gem. Um, uh, I, I think that's the case. Um, so you can look at it one of two ways. Number one, he's freaking pumped to, to get back at this or, this could be like full Yankee revenge or whatever it is. Um, in know, any case, uh, again, on, on a yeah, slate, he's, like a, he's like, one of the most dominant pitchers, young pitchers in baseball. It's not like right. So, but, so here's the case. Yeah. So here's the deal. So on a slate like this, you 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 look. Let's go back to fundamental. You you want pitchers with, with strikeout upside, right? And 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 if you look at at you look at the K props. I mean, this guy's a full like I think a full one ahead of everybody else um, as far as his K prop goes. Um, I didn't look through all that. I'm just kind of imagining, I can't imagine anybody else being within a point of him. No. Um, so yeah, but then again, it's, it's, it's the Yankees. <laughs> it's like whatever that, I don't know what that means anymore, but, but, but it is the Yankees. And like you said, they are patient and they have some professional hitters. They always do. They always will. And it, you know, goes back to what we discussed in the season preview. You know, you have a, you have a bad pitcher against a bad hitter, hitting environment. What do you do? Or likewise, if you have a, a pitcher with upside against a good hitting environment, good hitters. What do you do? And this is a, it's a pretty good example of that. You know, I'll, I'm probably not going to do it because um, I think I'm just I'm just kind of more into like paying down for pitching right now. But he certainly look gun to my head. Who's going to score the most fantasy points on the slate? Um, I would definitely say him. And I'll, I will also say gun to my head. Who's got the best best chance for thirty on the slate? Probably him too. I think it's, um, I think we got to stop the thirty thing. I think it's got to be the best chance at twenty. I, I really twenty think then. Okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. I best don't think chance. we're gonna see anybody at thirties without a totally like one hitter type of thing or something. Well, well, now we have to start thinking about price then. Like if, if we're we're looking for twenty, do we want to pay ten two for that? I think I think so. I think I think that's the problem. I think we're looking at it the wrong way in some ways. Okay. You know what I mean, I think that that is. You have one guy who's really got that kind of extended. I could say that about Patino, though. Although he's not going to get extended right. as much. The A's are so bad. Like, uh, but he's going to. He, but if you give him five innings, he's probably like you know two to one to get the win. You know what I mean? Like for openers, that's four points. Well, he's probably he's not he's not a favorite to get the win. There, this is a this is a 50-50 game. No, but if he makes it through five innings, I I, I think I think that he he rates to have to get the win. Yeah, probably because you're saying that they would. I don't. I mean, Tyon's not a bad pitcher either on the other side of this. But yeah, okay, yeah. I get your point. You know what I mean? Yeah, more more times than not, if you pitch five innings. Well, no, 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 I'm talking about. No, 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 I was talking about. Uh, I said Patino. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Manoa. Excuse no, me. Patino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patino, absolutely. More than like. So that's what I'm saying. You you said you didn't like as much Patino. You know, we we're talking about Patino versus Manoa. So yeah. I was saying Patino's got that win lock, not locked in. You know what I mean? But he's got a better chance for that. So I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to play Manoa, but he's certainly the best. It's kind of a stupid thing to say. Probably the best play. Right? Yeah. Um, but I'm probably going to just try to do something else. Um, Yankees and Toronto, again, like I think, I go back to what you said. I mean, you probably have to play Toronto every game um, until, until further notice, I suppose. They're not, they rank pretty well, and the Yankees don't rate that well. Um, I don't know what to do about this game. I have a feeling you're supposed to, you're supposed to get this game right somehow to, to, to win the slate though. Yeah, I don't I don't really um, <laughs> I don't really necessarily want the hitters from either of the sides in this game. So okay. somebody else can have it, I guess. Um, I, I just would be playing these guys as one-offs. I don't see, I mean, yes, you can always play Toronto stack. There's nothing about this particular situation that is like, oh, you you get the second best bullpen in baseball with a really good starting pitcher who he <laughs> basically gave up nothing all year. People still tried to find ways to pick against, pick on them. Um, give up nothing. I mean, I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel like a game that there's nothing about it that stands out tonight, except for that you could say it's a smaller, smallish slate. The Blue Jays won't be overly owned, which is always a reason you should be playing them 10% and everything. But I don't know if I want to make anybody priorities here. Just, just one offs for me. Um, the one guy I'll always play is, is Vlad because people don't always want to spend all that up, all the way up to him. But 
Um, and he's the best hitter not named Soto in baseball, <laughs> or at least he was last year. Anyway, uh, we can move on because this next one, I think we're both going to have some interest in, and it's going to be the chalk, right? Like, um, I think that we're going to be on board with playing Atlanta, especially against this, this Washington situation. <laughs> the Washington's, I think Washington's going to be really bad. Yeah, I, I have um, Atlanta actually, well, they're, they're, they're between one, two, three teams that are at the top for me. And I do have them pretty, pretty highly owned also. So I think in the, in the, uh, in, in the, in the lottery type things, I don't know how much of that I'll have, but I, I certainly rate as the best. Well, yeah, one of the, at least one of my two top stacks, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we have Ozuna, Duvall, Albies, Riley. I mean, I have Garcia in here also, but whatever, uh, Darno, if he gets in there or whatever. So yeah, uh, I, I, skip, I skip. By the way, I don't. I don't think. Well, is is he no? Is is he no in play? I mean, maybe. He's I mean, I think. Have, I think people are gonna. Have, he's yeah. gonna have, look like one of the same as the other guys. Yeah, exactly. He's he exactly. He's one of the one of those other guys. So I do like some of that, and I like some of the, and I like Atlanta, sure. Um, and I don't like anything on Washington. Yeah, I I like. Um, I do think Josh Bell's price on FanDuel is like he's two point eight, I believe, over there. Um, I think he's reasonable on FanDuel. Was we can use you know the utility spot or whatever. I, I did find some some builds with him in it, but like mostly this game is just going to be all about Atlanta. And then I'm always going like I'm going to really try to you know I'm put my put my money where my mouth is or whatever. I'm I, I keep talking about this with Soto, and I know it's not anything profound, but like I think he's genuinely the best hitter in baseball by a by a not a good margin, but I think that will will it'll be like completely everybody's going to be in agreement very soon if they aren't already on that page. What does worry me is he's such a good hitter <laughs> that he's not like out there going in, you know, but he's going to have the, he's going to accidentally walk his way into like two, two and three home run games. And it just feels weird to spend so much on a guy who's just a great pure hitter. And is does have plenty of power, but that's not necessarily his like, right. I mean, he'll, he'll hit the ball to the opposite field for a single when he needs to. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a matter of, and he was really frustrated himself the second half of last year. We targeted him a lot because he, he talked about it, trying to change his swing after the, and he did, he started hitting tons of home runs because he didn't hit that many home runs the first part of the season. He, I think he didn't hit he either one or none against the lefty. So he had the lefty bullpen coach throw to him in batting practice. Anyway. So I, I do like him. I think Atlanta is the, the obvious chalk of the night. Um, the bet, the better, one of the, I, I just think they're the best stack. Um, I think if you play this out, they're going to be the best stack most of the time or a good portion of the time, not most of the time, but more than any other team will. Um, and I think he starts with Albies. It goes Albies for me, Olsen, Duval, Riley, Ozuna, or some form of that. I'm okay with any way you want to do it. Um, but I, I do think Atlanta is the top stack. And even if I'm not stacking them, I will be playing a lot of those guys I just mentioned. Uh, Seattle and Minnesota. Um, Sheets, what do you got here? Because I think that I am going to just make it, no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to, to play Dylan Bundy probably. <laughs> Um, I know we don't necessarily need all the savings. I think he has the same upside as almost all these other guys do though. And he's cheaper. I think he might be a better bet like than some of these other guys. Now there's always, you get the weird Bundy game where you can stack Seattle too. This that's completely reasonable. But I think that if I have to build one lineup on DraftKings, that he's in my, he's in one of my, one of my pitching spots. And, uh, I'm not going to stack the other side of this game, but I don't mind one offs from either side. If you're not playing. Uh, Bundy and there's there's no way I'm going to play Flexen at that price I don't think today. All right, so I got two two things and this is this is the welcome welcome to baseball uh, diatribe or comment by me. You're welcome to baseball GPPs. So right now the my my favorite given everything else pitching wise with um, uh, with upside with value with whatever is is Dylan Bundy. Like he's my, he's my favorite pitcher on the slate right now. Um, he's you know he's certainly volatile but he's got strikeout upside and. If I'm not mistaken, he won you six figures. So it's okay. good enough for me, right? Um, him, yeah. Yeah. So so uh so he's my top guy. Now, the other thing I, I will mention to you is this. So as I mentioned uh in several uh slate previews, in addition to the sheets that I put out, I also have kind of like this little, you know, leverage whatever thing that I I, I track where I come up with my favorite overall like leverage stack given everything else. I don't really put it out there, whatever, unless I'm doing the videos. The, yesterday, I'm so mad at myself because I didn't go like a zillions on this. But my favorite one, given that match, was actually Cleveland to put up 15 runs. And, and I'm, like, I, I, I'm, I'm so freaking steamed. 
that I didn't really pay that much attention uh, and, and didn't play a lot of it. But I will say that my top overall, as far as that metrics goes, is Seattle today. Um, so, so, well, so welcome to, to baseball DFS, where my favorite play on the pitching side is Bundy. My favorite play on the hitting side is Seattle. And it's perfectly reasonable <laughs> the way GPPs were. And that's, that's, uh, that, that's, that's kind of where I'm at in this game. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like it. Um, I like both. I think both of these sides, you could definitely make an argument for, but less so Minnesota for me, but I, I agree. I agree that yeah, Seattle does make some sense. I do think there's some, some guys on like, I mean, look, Buxton's another guy you can always play is it's a perfect type of one-off play because of the power speed upside combination. Sure. Um, you've got a cheap Miguel Sano on, on he's 2.2 on FanDuel. That's something worth. Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Mitch Haniger is too cheap on DraftKings, so if you're not playing Bundy, I think you want to play Haniger. I really, that's guy's another elite level baseball player who just is not treated that way because he plays for this team. You also got a 2K flat outfielder. If that yeah, Julio us. Rodriguez. So I was going to mention, it. yeah, he, Julio Sorry. Rodriguez would be if you're going to play the stack, he's probably going to be the one part of it that's actually owned. Maybe you'll get a couple guys on Suarez or Haniger. Um, but yeah, it's it's it's. I do think they're they're all interesting plays, even though I don't find myself leading that stack but i do think it's a great leverage stack to get off of you know the chalky bundy and then you get some exposure to these just hitters that are all going to be less than 10 percent owned i think um how about la and miami here uh this feels like a game that we'd want to target it's early in the year it's warmer in california than it is most places it's uh it's pretty, pretty ugly today actually though it's pretty gray out there but uh I, I don't know man this is feels like a really good game stack that I'm trying to figure out why I'm not heavier on other than outside of like Otani and Trout and maybe a little Rendon, but I think this is a great game. Uh, not, not, I hate the whatever game stack in that. I understand it's not correlation because one side or the other, but just two pitchers I'd like to pick on with, uh, with guys who I think are going to be lowish owned on Miami. And, and I think outside of Trout and Otani pretty low owned on the angels. So what, what do you think? What are you doing this game? Yeah, I think the I have the Angels rated uh, second best on uh, FanDuel and like third best on DraftKings. Mm -hmm. um, and I have the, well, so so here's the problem, and, and you hit the nail right on the head. I also have them really high owned, and the reason why they're high owned is because there's Trout and Otani. You know what I mean? On and, FanDuel, and I, right? Not on DraftKings. Uh, oh, no, I have them high owned on DraftKings too. Just Trout and Otani. I don't think anybody else is. Right? But that's my what I mean. My point oh, right, is, right. is that is that those are the guys that that, that are going to make these things seem high owned, but. It's just a stupid thing to ask, but how, how do you play an angel stack without those two? You know what I mean? It's really hard. I mean, I'm not saying it's hard. I mean, you could do it, but don't don't you want to play those guys? And like, yeah. hey, you want to play the angels? So that's so it's going to be high on regardless if you, if you play those guys. Um, not, nonetheless, I also I think that um, as gross and uh, not gross it is, I, I like the pitcher too. Uh, isn't isn't that guy good on Miami? Hernandez. I mean, I, th I have him as one of those, I think one of those guys also who I can play. So I don't know. Uh, I like the Angel. I'm I, not getting I, I to Miami. Didn't, didn't even consider him. Really? Yeah. I, I got to the Miami, I didn't get to the Miami stack and you'd, you'd be proud of me because I'm, how many, how many, how many slice slates last year and I played Miami slate. I, I'm, not, I'm not on them today for some reason. And then um, I did get some Hernandez. <laughs> I don't know. It's tough, tough pitching environment across the board today. I don't know. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I, I, I think Lorenzen would be the one I would have more interest in. And him too. No, 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 no. And him too. I have yeah. him also. I'm just not going to do this spreading out at pitcher. I've, I've just been, I get it. Like it's just, to me, I've tried, it was a rare slate where I'll do that here and there, but like, I don't think it's the right way to play. Like, no, I'm I would, back. That's the thing. I'm not saying I'm going to spread it out. I'm just saying that all these are yeah. options. I mean, I'll oh, I, know, I, know, I know you're not saying that. I'm just really thinking about it out loud because yeah. I, it is tempting to say, okay, well, I want some of this and some of this, but I don't know. It's just overall the, the way to win at this game is consistently just to get, just do whatever you have to, to get the pitchers in your lineup. It doesn't matter. Owners, you know, every now and then take a weird shot on something, but mostly you want to have like the guys you're playing, you want to play some pitchers at 50% to 75%, if not higher. And especially on like, you know, seven, eight game slates. So it's, it's just something though, maybe early in the year, we'll have to sort of feel it out and go through this, but I don't know that by the end of the year that I'm going to, I don't know that by, you know, a week from now, I'm not going to be going, why was I doing that? Like, why was I stacking, keeping my stacks very tight and my pitchers really spread out? Cause it should right. be the opposite in, uh, in DFS, but that's just my own sort of consider my own thoughts 
Um, all right, Cheech, San Diego, San Francisco, uh, the, the meaningless wind blowing out to center field in, in San Francisco is just remember, it doesn't really mean anything. Occasionally, there'll be a day where they say it can matter on when the heat's hot or whatever. Uh, there's nothing about this wind that we should treat as real as far as I'm concerned. I've been there when it was blowing 30 miles an hour out to center field and when it's blowing in 30 and it was no different. The stadium is built to sustain the wind. So just throwing that out there, because if you look at a weather report, this game is going to look tempting. Um, Sheets, I think Alex Wood is going to be really popular, and I don't think I'm going to have any of it. Why is that? I don't, why do I need to? Like, just because everybody's going to play somebody, he's not, so if I'm going to make him versus a 9,200 pitcher, why would I just take a low owned guy who has, I mean, or, or take Manoa, who's got like a much, much, much higher ceiling. Um, and I, I don't, you know, I understand San Diego has looked bad coming out, but so I'm not just going to like, stop like they got cr they crushed lefties even without uh tatis last year like uh, at least for the first half of the year anyway i don't know i, I just don't see any reason i need to play no, this, this is this is my point this is why you know when i look at all these guys kind of like rated the same i, I was being i don't want to say half facetious i mean yeah why why would you, why wouldn't you then you gave the answer i mean because he's no better than anybody else and he's 25 percent owned you know what I mean? like mm -hmm. um yeah i got no problem not playing him either uh and, and not that he's not a good play it's just just it's just I'd I'd rather I'd rather play I'd rather play Manoa Bundy or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, or even I don't know, maybe even Enoa Bundy. Ah, that's interesting. How about Enoa Manoa? That's another one. Remember we had the Manoa Manias last year? Yeah, we had so, they, they always picture the same day, I felt like. Yeah, like uh yeah, exactly. Um, but uh I will say this. Uh I really like San Francisco on both sides, uh, mm. especially on FanDuel. At FanDuel, I have them as my top overall stack, um, but I like them on DraftKings too. I mean, they they uh, they're good, <laughs> they're good. And I know that you say the center fielder, you know, whatever, but I'm not particularly scared of of Nick Martinez. I don't know. Uh, I also have this weird idea that they're always low owned because it's the last game, and 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 if. That's why the Dodgers always were low owned, I guess. Like even though they're, they're I, the Dodgers weren't always low owned, they were. Probably, I think they were the second or third highest. They, they did those those rundowns. Somebody was saying it. I think they were the I second or third highest owned team. Oh really? I always I always, I always seen that way. So I definitely I definitely like San Francisco. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good call. I really do. Um, I I think that if this was like any and you're, people don't play them because it's San Francisco. That's the truth. It's the worst hitters park in baseball by a pretty good margin. Um, but like. You, you do have, you know, some, some guys with power upside and they're all like cheap outside of belt and Crawford. Um, yeah. Like I'm, I'm on board with San, San Francisco. I'll, I'm willing to, to play them at their ownerships ahead of some of these other teams. Um, they'll be my secondary stack most likely because I'm going to be playing a ton of Atlanta and eating some of that chalk, but that's all the more reason to get some, you know, the little low, lower owned guys. Um, sure. Nobody's going to play Jock Peterson. I don't think at 3,200, I'll take that shot. You know, there it is. Um, uh, but I like it. I, li I like I like the I like the Giants call. All right. So just for me, the, the priorities are Atlanta, um, the L.A. Miami game, both sides of it. I don't mind. And then Tampa was my third one, but I don't mind to make maybe making some switches over to San Francisco. I like the idea of, of getting some of that. And then the one I'm afraid that I'll be underweight on, but I'm probably going to be is Philadelphia. And the pitchers yes. for me are Bundy and Patino in one and two. Yeah, my top. Uh... Again, top overall is Atlanta, but 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 with the uh, with leverage and stuff, I do like the Seattle and San Fran and San Francisco as the two kind of off the board uh, ideas. Uh, pitching wise, as I mentioned, uh, I'm gonna just keep an eye on the ownership and and just accept the fact that I, I have no real preference right now. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I I I have a feeling I'm gonna end up at Bundy at the end. You know what I mean? Like in my non Seattle's, and likewise, you know, the other the other way around. I I have a feeling that that 5600 is gonna be not, like you said, maybe you don't need it, but it's it's still nice to have. You know I, mean? mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so so I mean, well, I, I like him at fifty six hundred. I like Patino. I think those two are the most are are the and Mano. I guess mm -hmm. are the three are the three top and 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 Alex Wood again. I like it, but at high ownership, I don't know. I mean, those those four, are, I guess, the top for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sort of I, I'm off of Wood, but I yeah, I have Patino, Bundy, uh, Suarez, Manoa, but I'm. I'm open. I'm open to mixing in anybody, basically. So Let me take a look it. real quick at Fanduel before I forget. Okay. Uh, Fanduel, the pitching is even worse. In other words, it's it's even more 
well, condensed just, for me. Easier to uh, play Bundy, yeah. Just play him. I mean, all these. I mean, like, I, I don't know. So, so it's it's going to be. I'm just probably just going to pick one. <laughs> just kind of roll with it. Yeah. Well, I think that no, but this is. I I, I kind of disagree a little bit with the way that that with the way that we're talking about it somewhat on Fanduel because I think I, that you, you do want to try. I mean, you kind of need to get the things right, and I just think nothing's. Bundy and Patino have just as good of a chance of going those innings as anybody else does, except right. for maybe Alex Wood, who's going to be owned, but won't and doesn't have the strikeout rate that these guys do at yep. their best. So that's those I are my two favorites. Yeah, I think that you're right. I think well, I think that part's right. I just think that we I don't want to make it like pitching doesn't matter, or you know, but I, I just want to when you see the little the little things that, that you don't agree with, like Alex Wood at his ownership, you know, that's an example yeah. of something like that. But if yeah. you told me, if, you know, if it was Max Scherzer and he was this owned on this slate, I would probably play him. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want the upside anyway. All right, guys, this is a little long one. We're still getting our, our baseball stuff back on. Hopefully you're able to join us for a live show that's happening that you won't even see till after this is done. Um, but Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, we're good. All right. A first pre-recorded show of the MLB season. And we'll be happy to come into you Let's every go. day. Everybody, Let's freaking go.